Hi you everyone. Uh, thanks for having me down today, Liz and the team at Court. It's, um, it's awesome to be back in Warrnambool. I actually grew up in Hamilton, just north of here, so we used to do little trip. We used to do little trips to Warrnambool to things like CD stores, and a lot of you won't know what they are. But um, so it, it, it's great to be back here. Um, I have got the slot just before afternoon tea. I, I Oh, you've cancelled it. All right. Well, I was just going to say, I'll, I will try and keep you up and alive uh, for, for the next uh, half an hour or so. OK, uh, Liz has already given you an overview of what we're going to cover today. I'm going to get fairly granular uh, and give you tools. Who's got a website here? All right, cool. You'll benefit out of this. What we're going to talk about initially is about uh, your product. And in this instance, your product is basically your website. Who, who's familiar with this screen? Yeah, yeah, it's Google. Um, I've done a search here for Anglesey accommodation. Can anyone tell me what is strange about that, what you see there? Anglesey accommodation, the first four websites you see are Airbnb, Stays, Booking and Trivago. Now, are any of those businesses located in Anglesey? No, okay. Isn't it interesting how the search space has changed? Has anyone noticed that? Over the last, uh, well, it's changed dramatically to this sort of uh, interface over the last 12 months, um, and if we go down memory lane, this is what it used to look like. Yeah, and you're like, oh yeah, I remember that. It used to be great. Uh, we used to have all these different, uh, we had ads at the top and they were clearly ads. Remember they had the grey or the background, they had the little yellow tag, and we were all like, no, nah, no, nah, we won't click those, we'll just go to the organic ones. Uh, and we used to have ads down the side here as well. We used to be able to have up to seven. I actually had to go via Google and find an old picture, so that's why it's not relevant to you guys, and it's auto repair in Vancouver, so don't worry about that. But, um, and then what came along is Google Places, uh, or what's now known as Google My Business, started to come in uh, as well. But it's quite interesting to see the, uh, the contrast there, going back uh, to that original one. The ads are really integrated now from the user's perspective. Um, Google will say that they've done that for the user experience, so that um, you know, people can see the information clearly. That's a load of rubbish. It's so that Google will make lots more money than they already do, and that those that aren't aware will click those ads thinking it's the first, first result. So it's important um, to review those SERPs. Now, anyone know what SERP means? Search engine result page. We abbreviate everything in our industry, so if you hear me say SERP, that's what I'm talking about. It's important to look at the key, key terms, as in Google your own key terms, and understand how it's looking uh, around your terms is in regard to that landscape. And we'll delve a bit further into that shortly. So let's look at understanding how we can attribute the performance of your um, uh, product in, in search. I often get asked this, is, is SEO still, still relevant? And yeah, it is. And Mel talked about it in her presentation. It will always be relevant. It is at the core of Google's search engine. Those organic search results will never go. So do you have to consider SEO? Yes, you do. And also, if anyone on the subcontinent has anything to do with it, yes, it's important. Who gets these emails? Yeah, they're good. I own a search agency uh, and a web development business, and I get 10 a day. And it's like, guys, do your research, come on, you know. <laughs> so they recognise the importance of it. But it's kind of changed now um, how we optimise, I guess, uh, for SEO. Back in the day, SEO businesses used to say, hey, give us all this money and we'll get you to rank number one. And you're like, oh, OK. And there was this big black cloud. It doesn't quite work that way now. There's a lot more onus back on the web owners uh, and also agencies like, uh, like us who are in charge of getting you uh, rankings in uh, Google. And what Google are really looking at, at at the moment is the user experience that users have on their site. And I'm going to show you a few tools in a minute that will allow you to understand how you're performing. But your, your actual website still needs to be really visible and, and set up well for Google. Is anyone using Google Search Console? Just quickly. It's an old webmaster. OK, go. First thing you do out of this is go and sign up for Google Search Console. It's a free tool. Um, it's a bit like Google Analytics. Who's got Google Analytics? All right, if you can work Google Analytics, you can work the Search Console. One key benefit of this, uh, sorry, two. It will give you overall ideas on how your site is performing, if there's any issues, if Google can't index the site, and so on. But it is one of the only places, it is the only place that you will find organic keywords, organic that is, keywords on how people are accessing your website. 
We used to get this information in analytics, if anyone's been an old uh, user of analytics for a while. Google Search Console, key tip is the only place that you'll find this data now. Right, but how do I know whether my website's actually visual, uh, being picked up in search engines and I'm doing the right thing? This is a great online tool uh, called SEO Site Checkup. Uh, it's, uh, it's a place where you can just uh, go to it. Don't all do it now, it is IP. Um, it, it, will, it will crash everything if you do. It's, it will only let one or two go through on one IP address, i.e. one wireless. But it will give you a great overview of all the on-page elements of your website and whether you're doing the right thing. Now, do I have a volunteer to, uh, to suggest their website? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Okay, so what's the exact domain? Uh, yep. Yeah. Oh, sorry. G-O-R-T-P. Dot com dot au? Great. So you pop that in. Uh, as I say, do this once you get out of today. And what this will do is it will give you, uh, it's great, it's a free tool, and it, it will give you an overview of uh, what's happening on your website. And it will give you uh, uh, actions on, on how to fix this. Now, it might just take a second to load, so we'll just, oh, here we go. It gives us an indication. <laughs> it's all happening, it's analysing it there. It will give us an overall score. Uh, score. And it will tell us if there's any issues. I don't like seeing red. There's a bit of red there already, but we'll <laughs> but I pre uh, thank you so much for volunteering the, the site. Um, and, and what it will start to do, I'll just, I'll just keep going into it, it'll start identifying what the issues are uh, with your actual website from an SEO perspective. And one of the key ones there that's missing is your meta descriptions. Okay, meta titles and meta descriptions, critical. I'm not going to talk a lot about them today, but you need to ensure that they are on every single page of your website and, uh, and they are optimised. It will tell you what you're telling the world and Google what your keywords are, your main keywords. Book, online, accommodation, great, park. So just think about that. Is, your, is that kind of the keywords that you're trying to target? You know, who, who knows? Uh, and this report will go into a, into a number of things. So it's telling you you're not using a, a few things there. I won't go into too much more detail on this report, but go and do it, run your website through it and give it some tips. If you see a lot of red and you pay a web developer, go back to the web developer and have a little chat to them, yeah? And show them the report. Okay, that's the second tool. Um, let me jump back in here. Right, whose site's optimised for mobile? Please tell me there's more. So yeah, thank you. Great. Yes, um, the mobile speed thing is really uh, gaining momentum. Google are throwing more and more weighting at fast, responsive websites. It's critical that you have a, a mobile site now. And I, I know you've probably heard a million um, speeches about that in the past, but you have to have it. Google are now going to start um, basically dropping you off search engines on mobile search if you're not mobile friendly. It will happen eventually and it's on its way and if you do a search for your website on mobile now on Google and it comes up with a little this site is not mobile friendly you need to action it so run that little test as as well I right. uh, need another volunteer who would like to test their mobile site yes ma'am okay www.hey tes b u r y house Great, thank you so much for uh, offering to, to do this. Now this is a Google tool, um, and I guess this kind of reiterates how uh, <coughs> serious Google are tasting, uh, taking this. they are um, built a site for you to check it. It's called testmysite.thinkwithgoogle.com. If you just go to Google and type uh, test my site, it'll be the first one uh, to come up there. And it will go through, go through your mobile version of your website and it will give you a really simplistic uh, score on, on how it's performing. Now, I need to keep talking for a little bit longer because it does take a little bit to go through. Is your site, do, do you have a mobile site? Yes. Is it responsive or a mobile template? Definitely. Okay, cool. We'll, we'll, we'll find out in a sec. Um, cool, so as that's going, any, any questions on mobile? Okay, so they're two different templates. So remember M dot sites, uh, so M dot XYZ dot com dot AU. A responsive is one, it's basically the code. The website if, will just uh, scale down to iPad and mobile, uh, or, it, or if your access is on mobile, it goes to an M dot 
uh, site. So responsive design is, the, is uh, you would have heard it in conversations, I'm sure, over the years. It was this new thing ages ago. It's like a critical thing uh, these days. Okay, so we've got a result, and thank you again so much for... for <laughs> no, I, I do appreciate it, because uh, it, it's not an easy thing to do, because Google are very critical uh, when they come to this site. So they're telling us that the, the, your mobile site took nine seconds to load, uh, which is obviously uh, far too long. Uh, and then what it does is give you an estimation of the visitors you're potentially losing. Knock a third off that, probably, just to be realistic. They do try and, they're trying to scare you a little bit with, with that information um, uh, to, to get into it. But um, yeah, definitely, definitely worth considering. Then that, what they'll do is give you an idea of where you're sitting within your industry. Um, and give you a related size. So it's, so it's pretty confronting. Uh, but again, don't, it's not absolute panic stations, but it probably means you need to have a bit of a look at it. Okay? And what's the, uh, I can't remember the last one it gives now. Uh, oh, and then it'll actually give you um, some tips on, on, on how to get sort of five seconds back. Ask for the report, it'll get emailed to your inbox uh, within the hour uh, that they do that. So that's Think with Google. Uh, check that out. So we do all that. We get, um, we get our site performing, we get all the data on there, we're happy days. But how do we get an even greater presence uh, in search? Mel touched on it in her um, presentation previously. It's content. Oh, content's so annoying. Like, cause as a business owner, I'm a business owner myself, I want to pay someone to sit there and write content to, to sit on a website. Uh, but it, it is critical. You have to do it. I think it's in tourism as well. You're lucky because you've actually got a lot to talk about. You know, you've got the area that you're in, not only just your business, you've got things to do, five top this, review that. You've got lots of um, uh, content ideas. So you are lucky in that. If you are struggling with what to write about um, when you sit down for a content strategy, uh, there's two really good websites here. I'm just going to show you the second one. The keyword planner is Google's one. Pop a keyword. If you've got a Google account, Use that, uh, log in, put some keywords in, and it'll give you sort of related terms. But there's, a, there's actually another really cool one that I like, and it's called answerthepublic.com. Uh, when you go to this website, there's this really grumpy bloke on it, and um, he gets really impatient with you if you don't put, uh, put in a search term uh, within a short amount of time. Go to the website, make him happy, and do a search. So you do that. So what I did in this instance is I put in the search term Great Ocean Road and I did it to the Australian market. And what it will do, if it hasn't fallen over, is generate uh, a really nice infographic. Uh, and I'll actually, no, I'll bring that up so you can see it. Go away, pop-ups, annoying. Um, it will give you the terms that people are punching into Google around the who, what, how, when, why related to that term. Who does how-to in Google? How-to do that? Yeah, we do it more and more these days, right? We, especially in YouTube, we do it a lot there. Um, how to put the Weber barbecue together, you know. Um, we, we do do a lot of that. So this, this engine here will say, how to travel Great Ocean Road, how to go Great Ocean Road. <laughs> There's some random ones in there. How the Great Ocean Road was built. All right, there's three articles that Liz and her team can just pump out tomorrow and capture some search engine activity around. So they're giving you tons of tons of searches. As I said, why, how, who, which, whatever. Uh, and then they also give you proposition <laughs> questions. Uh, Great Ocean Road accommodation for two. Uh, Great Ocean Road weather. For, for tomorrow, you know, th that's probably not a great one for an article, but you know, you can see you can see what people are putting into into search engines. Answer the public, great tool. I don't want to hear that you haven't got any um, content ideas after using something like that. Okay, and you can put multiple keywords in and, and have lots of fun with it. <coughs> right? That's all we have to do. Get the website right. Start writing all this awesome content. Job done. Well, kind of. My mate back in the early 90s coined this phrase, content is king. Has anyone heard that phrase? Yeah, yeah. A lot of people believe in it in our industry. Content is, is king. Well, I don't believe in it. I believe that content is queen. <coughs> so really in 2017, content is queen and distribution is king. Because you can create all the great content in the world, but how do you get it to market and get people engaging uh, with it? 
And this actually relates very similar to um, the infographic that Mel put up around the circle of life with digital. Okay, so you're creating content, um, uh, blogs, website articles, whatever, how to, uh, when to. Then you amplify it out through social, so that means just posting it, yeah? Uh, and you might then, if it ranks, starts ranking well, you'll see it in Google. Um, and then from social, it will go social reach, people liking it, the big four caravan park, you know. It might have had whatever, a couple of hundred people that actually liked it, but probably thousands saw it um, from, an, from an impression. So that's what we, we talk about with social reach. And then people started clicking the link back in it and driving inbound links back to your website. Yeah? That's the circle. It's pretty, pretty simple. Create content, but make sure you distribute it uh, out as well. Your brand in search. Okay, so I didn't want to pick on anyone, but I just found one, so I, I used it. So this is called Google My Business. It used to previously be called Google Places. Google rebranded it for whatever reason. They're the Google gods, they do what they wish. From a brand perspective in search, this is one of the critical things, in my opinion, that you need to manage and get right. Because there is nothing worse, and with all due respects to uh, Blake's estate, it's nothing worse than coming to uh, a page like this, uh, particularly in the tourism sector. And you can test this by Googling your brand name and seeing what comes up on the right. There's nothing worse than, well, not own my business. That, that means that no one's, no one's managing it. So if you see own my business, the first thing you need to do is click that and get it verified. So that, that's the first thing. But, you know, for a tourism things, missing information. I think it says operating hours, right? Wow. For a tourism you know, place, I'd have my operating hours on there. You know, a, a simple things like that. There's also been people leaving reviews and it's got two reviews and three stars. No, it's not exciting me to get down to the winery. People visually will make decisions based on these stars. You know? And I'm sure reviews are the bane of your existence on TripAdvisor and all that, I'm, I'm, I'm sure, having to respond to them. But from a Google perspective, the focus of today, it's really crit critical to keep on, on top of those. The other thing, protecting your brand in SERPs, or SERP stand for? Results page, yep, well done. <laughs> is uh, protecting your own brand uh, and, and your own uh, website in search. And I say protecting, competitors are competitors, we understand that, but also the aggregators. Do we like the aggregators? I don't know, I call them aggregators, stays, and, and, uh, is that right? Is that what you call them? Yeah, okay. Oh, no one's saying anything. Okay, cool. Do they take a commission if they get a booking? Yeah. Right. And if a customer goes directly to you, you, you know, there's no commission, right? So it's more profitable. Right, okay, cool. So I did get that right. So what's really important is to own your brand in search. Okay? And I just did an example for, uh, who did I pick? Uh, Gub uh, Cumberland, Lawn. And they're owning it in this space, in this search engine result page. How are they owning it? They're running their own brand ads in Google AdWords against their competitors, uh, sorry, the aggregators, uh, Booking.com, Agoda, and uh, whoever else is there. So they're running a brand campaign in AdWords so that they stay at the top of that page and they get the click. Brand uh, ads in AdWords are relatively cheap, particularly when you are the brand um, because of quality score and things like that. It's really, really cheap. So make sure you're advertising against your brand if you want to, not pay the other guy's commission uh, as well. So in this, in this uh, brand search, they've got Cumberland here, they've also got site links here. So there's one, two, three, four, five. Five click, potential clicks to their website there. They've got their organic listing number one there, as you'd expect. And then they've also got their places listing there. Seven opportunities for someone to click through to their website. Okay, instead of going off to these guys and paying them 15% or whatever. Is it 15% roughly? Yeah? Okay. Growing your audience in, in, in search. Um, there's a real shift in, in how we search. Anyone guess? Anyone use this? Voice search? Yeah? Voice search is pretty cool. Does anyone use, anyone use voice search? Yeah. Yeah. I do. I do it in the office, much to everyone's annoyance. We're in an open plan office and, you know, uh, I do it, you know. I just, sometimes I just can't be bothered writing out everything, so I just use it. Uh, voice search is, is, is really good for that, sorry. We'll see if we can do a bit of a test here. 
Hey Google, best places to stay in Warrnambool? Here are the listings for the best places to stay near Warrnambool. And there we go. We get the search engine result page. So voice search we do when we're lazy like me and you just want to rather than type it all out and we say it. Um, a lot of people use it on devices. Yeah. Um, it, with their headphones connected, uh, travelling or whatever it may, may be. There's a real shift in it. One of the first things I, I, I said to my team in, in Google when this kind of started getting momentum is how do we really actively target voice search? Oh, don't worry, I won't need that long. Um, <laughs> how do we really actually target voice search, uh, particularly in the paid side of things? And you can't do it yet, just so you know. Um, you can't just run voice only search campaigns. in AdWords. Anyone running AdWords? Yeah, a couple? Yeah, okay. Well, the, for the benefit of you guys, you can't quite do that yet. Uh, but that is coming. And when we went back to our Grumpy Mates website, the Answer the Public, <coughs> can you see where they're, they're getting that data from? Yeah? They're getting it from lots of, lots of voice search and how to do this and, 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 and where to do that. Great for longer tail search terms, what we call longer tail. So this is a long tail term when there's multiple multiple uh, words in the search query. And it ties in with the content stuff I was talking about before. Focus on longer tail. If, you go, if you're an accommodation place in Warrnambool, um, you know, trying to get optimised or get number one ranking for accommodation Warrnambool, that's short tail. Accommodation Warrnambool, accommodation Polo Bay, accommodation wherever. That's short tail. That's the hardest to do. It's the most costly in AdWords as well. Um, the opportunity there is to kind of spread your wings a bit and create some content in and around that. So even though that's a voice search, all it's doing is bringing up a, a Google result page. So even if you're interacting via voice to Google, it's just interacting with their, with their SERP. And up comes, uh, up comes guys like TripAdvisor because they, they do that top 10 and whatever else uh, on their website. So hence Google provides that data. And you can see it's the international guys that are doing it. Um, and it's, that's their SEO strategy. They create lots of long tail um, content for that specific type of search. So definitely get onto that. Last one, which is my favorite at the moment. Who's got one? No one's got one. <laughs> ah, you're slow adopters. <laughs> this is the future. Uh, about 10 years ago, I, I did a tourism presentation up in Marysville. I think it was Tourism Alliance guys back then. Um, and I put a picture of a smartphone up on screen. They're all like, oh, what's, what's this? And, um, <laughs> and, and you know, I said, you, you'll be able to get the internet on your phone. No, oh, you know, mind blown. Now it's, you know, a dime a dozen. We throw them out when the, when the screen breaks, you know. Um, this is the future. Uh, conversational interactions with with Google, there's another one out for Amazon uh, as well. This will be in every home. Not maybe looking like this, and this is the first one ever released. But in the next 10, 20 years, we'll all have one. And they're actually, they're actually really good fun. Uh, but they are, they are in early stages. But the difference between a Google Home device and a Google, uh, sorry, like a voice search, is Google Home is conversational, OK? Now, I didn't want to do a live demo here. <laughs> So, just because, you know, technology and Google Home. So I did a little one at, uh, at home earlier this week just to give you a, a bit of an idea on, on how it might work. Okay, Google, what will the weather be in Warrnambool this Thursday? In Warrnambool Thursday, it'll be cloudy with a high of 17 and a low of 8. Okay, Google, how long will it take to drive? It takes two hours and 19 minutes to drive to Warrnambool. Cool. Okay, Google. How long is the Great Ocean Road? Great Ocean Road has a length of 243 kilometres. Okay, Google. Are there tourist attractions on the Great Ocean Road? I found a few places. The first one is 12 Apostles visit a facility at Great Ocean Road and the River Road in Queenstown. The second one is Lockhart Gorge at Great Ocean Road in Campbell. The third one is the Grotto at Lot 2 Great Ocean Road in Port Campbell. <coughs> okay. Okay, well, where are the best places to stay in Vaughan? I found a few places. The first one is Lawn Hotel 176 Great Ocean Road in Vaughan. 
The second one is Lawn Coach Training at One Dean's Marsh Road in Bog. The third one is Grand Pacific Hotel Lawn at 268 Mount Joy Parade in Bog. Okay, good. Who's awesome? You're basically frozen. That's how cool you are. <laughs> Did you notice she left me hanging there for a split second? I was like, tell me. <laughs> so that's the future, right? And it's really easy to use. Like I, when I got that device, um, you know, and I'm obviously into this stuff, I thought, oh, I'm gonna have to train it. I'm gonna have to do this and do that. It took about five, five minutes um, to kind of get it ready. And you, can, and you can ask it all sorts of things. I'm actually off to Thailand tomorrow for a holiday with the family and we're learning the language via Google Home. You can say, okay, Google, how do you say good morning in Thai? And it will just tell you. So that, that, that whole interaction uh, by those home devices is coming. Get ready for it. And next, by this time next year, I reckon half of you will have one in your, phone, uh, in your house potentially. Cool, so that, that, that's really it for me. Um, so I hope you found that in, informative and short and sharp and punchy. Um, I'm open to any questions. Thank you, Joel, for the great presentation. Cheers.